I'm Melissa Case from Hat to Hem, and today I'm going to show you how I recreated Mina's green walking gown. This gown is based on one worn by Renona Ryder in a 1992 gothic horror film, Bram Stoker's Dracula. The gown was designed by Iko Ishioka, who won the Academy Award for the costume she designed for the film. And if I mispronounced her name, I'm really sorry. Now for this video, I'm really just going to focus on the overskirt, but if you're interested in any other aspects of the dress, be sure to check the playlist. Of course, this is the first video being uploaded to the playlist, so if you're interested in other aspects and you're watching this shortly after I upload it, you may have to wait a couple weeks. Sorry. Now, before we even get started, I just want to apologize for the image quality for my reference pictures. The only high quality images I could find of this design were recreations by other costumers, and I really wanted to stick to primary sources for this video, so the image quality is... it, it could be better, so I'm sorry. Okay, on to the analysis. The overskirt of this gown consists of a long side apron and a waterfall bustle in the back. The waterfall bustle appears to be divided into three sections or six sections depending on how the sections were cut. I opted to work in three sections, but I'll get to that soon. Just a quick note, I didn't realize that this image of the gown was mirrored, so I ended up adding pleats to the top of the side apron that I don't believe exist in the actual gown. Luckily, I know my client likes to have details that no other cosplay of a design will have, so I'm not too worried about this blunder. Before we get started, this gown is over a foundation of historical undergarments, all of which were made by me. This set includes drawers, a chemise, a corset, hip padding, a bustle cage, and a petticoat. I know it seems like a lot, but they all help to build that perfect late 19th century silhouette. Once I had the foundation done, I draped the side apron. I had the front edge of the apron start about 3 inches to the right of what would be the center front of the gown. I pleated up one side of the apron and yes, I used the fork trick to keep the plates uniform. I'm pretty sure that this is as close as I'll be able to get since the pictures weren't particularly clear as you saw earlier. Prepping for the back of the overskirt was a little more work. I'll spare you having to watch me be bad at math and just show you the results. I started out with this little sketch. I measured out where I want everything to fall on the dress form, both at the waist and at the floor. Then I divided the top and the bottom by six. I may have fudged the math a little bit so that the sections would be even. Then over here I have my little prototype. Since each section is just a large piece of fabric pulled up on itself, I need to figure out what exactly that piece would look like. That led to this sketch here. I just used this to get the gist of how to figure out the shape. The actual shape would go on for a bit longer, but as you can see I kind of ran out of room. And at this point I had the gist of it, so I kind of didn't really see the point of spending more time on this than I had to. After that, I decided to draw it to scale, which is how I ended up with my grid paper here. So this little thing is the scale model of the folded section. For the sake of not using a ton of grid paper, I had each square count for two inches. Then I was able to sketch out a scale drawing of the section laid flat. I scaled my drawing up on pattern paper and a half hour later, I had my pattern for the back done. Since this is a brand new technique for me, I decided to create a mock-up. I folded my muslin in half and I cut the pattern on the fold. Next, I played with the exact placement of the folds while the mock-up was on my dress form. You can't see it in the video, but I wrote down the spacing of the pins to refer to later. Alright, we're finally ready for me to cut out the fabric! I cut out three layers of both the fabric and the lining on the fold, just like I did with the mock-up. I added a half inch seam allowance around the edges. Then, right sides together, I sewed the fabric and the lining together, leaving the top open. I pressed the seam and clipped the seam allowance, before turning the whole thing right side out. Then I get to press the whole thing all over again. I marked the placement of the folds at the top with the pins, spaced out according to my notes. Then came the actual folding. This was definitely one of the most satisfying parts of this commission. I just really love that point when a project starts to become recognizable. 
I lightly pressed the pleats to set them, and then I took the whole thing to my sewing machine to stitch the top of the pleats down. The layers were so thick that it took some time to persuade the needle to go through, but it worked out in the end. For added security, I stitched the bottom of each diamond through the back of each section. I personally would have liked the motion, but the back of the gown comes across as a bit stiff in the video I watched. I'm sure this is done on purpose for symbolism, but either way, we're going with the stiff look. I used a herringbone stitch to connect the three panels together, and the back is done! Okay, back to the side apron. I used the mock-up as my guide when I cut out my fabric, and then I actually used that same mock-up as the lining. I thought this fabric might be a little too lightweight, and there's nothing light and flowing about Mina's gown, so flatlining it will add a little bit more weight to the fabric. I pleated up the top and the sides, and secured the pleats down by top stitching them. When I draped the side apron, I cared more about the pleats and how the skirt draped than the actual shape of the bottom of the apron, so I'm taking the time here to fold up the bottom and make sure I get the shape I want. I then whip stitch the hem. It's a sturdy one inch hem and it gives some more of that much needed weight to the apron. Hopefully this will prevent it from getting too fluttery. The hem was pressed and now all that's left is to attach it to the back. I bound the raw edge of the side apron with some bias tape. The pink was a little joke for my client since her undergarments are either pink or have pink trim and her last commission was very pink. I just couldn't resist adding some hidden pink to this gown too. The bias tape was whip stitched down to where I wanted it in the back and then I turned it over and I slip stitched it in the front to conceal the pink from the outside. And that's it. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Finished images of this dress should be on Facebook and Instagram soon. If you're interested in more progress videos, please make sure you hit that subscribe button because I will be posting another video in two weeks. Until then, I guess I'll see you later. Bye!